Robert Lee Massey and Stephen Wayne Anderson paid the ultimate price for their crimes. I know. I watched them both get executed at San Quentin State Prison. I'm going to tell you a little bit about each one of these guys, and then we're going to talk about the death penalty in California. The first execution I ever witnessed was of Robert Massey. He was a poster child for the death penalty. He had been given the death penalty twice. He spent most of his life as a young person bouncing back and forth from one foster home to another, and he managed to pick up a pretty good juvenile arrest record. However, in 1965, he upped his game. He robs a man in Southern California, and after the man gave up his wallet, Massey shot him in the head. There was no reason for that, but the man lived. A few days later, Massey approaches a couple on their front lawn in San Gabriel, California, just east of Los Angeles, and it seems for no apparent reason, he shoots the woman and she dies. About a week later, he's still on this rampage, this murder rampage, a shooting rampage. He's, he shoots and wounds another victim. He was arrested, tried, convicted, and sentenced to death. He was sent to San Quentin. On five different occasions, Massey was about to be put to death, but a stay of execution came into play. Finally, after a while, Massey gave up on all his appeals and said, I just, I just want to die. However, in 1972, the California Supreme Court ruled that the death penalty was cruel and unusual and was done away with. As a result, over a hundred convicted killers, including Massey, were made eligible for parole. And wouldn't you know it, in 1978, Massey was released on parole. And a short time later, even after he beat the death penalty once, he couldn't, he, he couldn't uh, uh, enjoy his freedom. He didn't last that long. I think it was eight months after being paroled, he walks into a liquor store in San Francisco to rob it. He shoots and kills the owner and wounds an employee. Where does he go? He gets arrested, tried, convicted, back on death row in San Quentin. All of a sudden, he's facing the death penalty a second time. After several unsuccessful appeals, Massey gives up again. This time he decides, hey, you know, just kill me. He had no family. So at, on midnight, on March 27, 2001, I witnessed his execution. I was an assistant director for the California Department of Corrections, and part of my job was to, to witness execution. He died by lethal injection. He was 60 years old. The odd thing about this execution is usually there are hundreds, maybe thousands of protesters at the gates of San Quentin. But this time, there were very few protesters. Now, the usual people were there. there. There were always these Benedictine monks that kneel in front of the gate and don't move the entire evening. And it was cold. It was March. And then there was all kinds of other groups that just wanted publicity, like Save the Whales. You know, and it, and, but nobody was really there to protest Massey's execution. Now, the second execution was of Stephen Wayne Anderson. He was put to death for a 1980 murder. He escaped from the Utah State Prison and ended up in San Bernardino County. And he was mostly a burglar. He had a, he had a history uh, of burglary and other crimes. But he breaks into this 80-year-old woman's home, thinking it was unoccupied. And while burglarizing it, she appears. Well, he kills her. She was a retired piano teacher, and Anderson shot her in the face, and she died instantly. After fun finding some money in the house, he decided he was hungry, so he sat down and cooked himself a meal and ate. The neighbors got anxious about hearing a gunshot, so they called the sheriffs. The sheriffs arrive, and they arrest Anderson for the murder. Well, he was convicted and sentenced to death. 
But in the meantime, uh, Anderson, who, who must have had a death wish, claims that he killed other people and claims that, that he had killed an inmate in the Utah prison, which was self-defense. And he also kind of made himself out to be some kind of a hitman, saying he was good for another six murders on the streets uh, in, in Las Vegas. However, the police could never find any victims. They, they, they investigated his story and found it to be untrue. He was never charged with any of these other murders that he claimed uh, he had done. And while in prison, he wasn't exactly a model inmate either. He, he had problems adjusting to California prison system. And he was written up several times for assaulting other inmates. But what he did do, he, he wrote a thou, over a thousand poems. And he took advantage of the educational system. After his appeals ran out, he was executed. And that was January 29th, 2002. He died of lethal injection. And that was the second execution that I had ever witnessed. And to me, you know, there was a lot of controversy over uh, lethal injection. Uh, but to me, I have to tell you, the, the, the two that I saw by lethal injection, it was like watching somebody fall asleep. As we know, the death penalty is the ultimate punishment. And the death penalty in California and across the country is controversial. And we're going to debate this issue years and years after, after we're gone. It'll be... It'll be uh, reinstated. It'll be uh, uh, reinstated a number of times. Be ruled unconstitutional, reinstated, ruled un unconstitutional, reinstated. At the current time, uh, Governor Newsom has a moratorium. So no one's going to be executed as long as Governor Newsom is in office. There are over 700 people on death row in California uh, waiting uh, for their appeals. More of inmates on death row have died from natural causes than execution. In California, we've used three different methods of execution. In the 1800s, we executed people by hanging them. And the hangings occurred at San Quentin and Folsom. And some 300 prisoners died from hanging. In 1937, the uh, lethal gas was introduced as a means of executing inmates. And then, of course, it was a short time after that that they switched to lethal injection. I don't think we'll ever see another inmate executed in California. I think that the death penalty will be ruled unconstitutional and inmates uh, will either be sentenced to life without the possibility of parole or maybe some other sentence. I have heard that there are already people in, in, the, in Sacramento, part of the legislature, working on doing away with life without the possibility of parole and making everybody that comes off a of death row eligible for parole. So stand by. You might have one of these killers as your neighbor sometime soon. Now, during my career, which lasted almost 50 years, I interviewed hundreds of countless numbers of murderers, and I never heard them say anything about their victims until they were caught. And once they were caught, they you know, showed some kind of remorse. And I think it was because they were caught, okay? But regardless of what happens to the death penalty in California, the one thing we have to remember are the victims and the victims' families. They survive and they have to live on not knowing the plight of the person who killed their, their loved one. Well, I think sometime in the future, uh, I think the death penalty will be ruled unconstitutional again. And, and pending, you know, some kind of reversal of that, the victims will have to live with that. But let's never forget the victims and their loved ones.